Hello everyone, welcome to the video on a quick review on blood products. Now let us see about the blood. See blood is made up of plasma and blood cells. 55% of the blood is made up of plasma whereas 45% of the blood has got blood cells. In the blood cells we have got red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. In the plasma out of that 55% of plasma, 91% is water. 8% it has got proteins. The prominent protein is albumin. All, at least six, the, uh, among the proteins, 60% is albumin. So albumin decides osmotic gradient of blood plasma. Now the rest of the proteins are globulins. You have alpha globulins, beta globulins and gamma globulins are there. Beta globulins are clotting factors whereas gamma globulins are immunoglobulins, antibodies. Now the rest of the things, dissolved water, some of the electrolytes like sodium, chloride, glucose, amino acids, all these things will make up only 1% of the blood plasma. Coming to the blood products, you have three major products are there. One, whole blood, as such the whole blood. Now the next one is cell components. Like what do you have the cell components? RBC, platelets and then the plasma part. Now in the plasma, you have three different products are there. One is known as dried human plasma. Second one is known as fresh frozen plasma. Third one is cryoprecipitate. From the same plasma, you can have three different products are there. And then you have one more thing called as dried human serum. Now serum, if you, from the plasma, if clotting factors are removed, the remnant one is called as serum. This is called as dried human serum. And finally, you have plasma derivative proteins are also there like albumin. And then beta globulins like uh, prothrombin, fibrinogen, fibrin foam. All of these are, again, blood products. The last one is immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are nothing but antibodies. And finally, you have plasma substituents are also there, like polyvinyl pyrrolidine, uh, gum saline, and then dextra. We'll say about each and everything. The first one, whole uh, blood. Now, whole blood, we all know that it is collected from median cubital vein. The maximum amount can be collected is 450 ml. The pouch in which the blood is getting collected is coated with anticoagulants to avoid coagulation. Three major anticoagulants are there. ACD, acid, citrate, dextrose, which is widely used. Second one is heparin and then sodium EDTA. Based on the anticoagulant used, the shell life will be there. It, it is around three to five weeks. That means 21 to 35 days. Now, once it is collected, it is stored between two to six degrees centigrade. So this is what is about whole blood. Now, coming to the uses, see right now the use of whole blood is very much reduced. Whatever the component is specifically required that is being used in the hospitals. Coming to the next product is concentrated red blood cells. Now, this is prepared when the blood is centrifuged, the high density cells will come down and the supernate has got plasma. So, the plasma and supernate is removed and the, and the uh, concentrated RBC is collected. This is what is called as concentrated red blood cells. Now, again, this is stored at 2 to 6 degrees centigrade and the lifetime, shell life will be Again, it varies from 5 to 6 weeks. That means 35 days to 42 days. Again, it depends upon the anticoagulant or additive which is being used. So this is about RBC. Now, concentrated RBC is widely used to treat hypoxia, anemia like sickle cell anemia. Now, concentrated RBC contains red blood cells. Red blood cells, the major component is hemoglobin which carries oxygen. So whenever there is hypoxic condition is there or the chronic anemia is there, it is because of reduced hemoglobin levels. To replenish that, concentrated RBC is used. Now, moving to the next product, platelets. Again, see, when, when the blood is being centrifuged, the bottom part will be of red blood cells and the top part, supernate, will be of plasma. In between, there is a buffy layer is there, that is what contains platelets. That is siphoned off and, and uh, uh, separated and stored. Now, platelets can be stored at 20 to 22 degrees centigrade temperature, but their shelf life is only 5 days. This is what is the problem is. Now the next one is plasma component. Now in the plasma, as I told you uh, previously, there are three components are there. Dried human plasma, uh, fresh, uh, frozen flesh plasma and cryoprecipitate. We'll see one by one. Now see dried human plasma. With dried, you have two components are there. Dried human plasma, dried human serum. The moment you see dried, it indicates complete removal of water. And this can be done by a process called as lyophilization freeze drying that means plasma is taken it is freeze all the water will get uh, condensed and it is removed by evaporation sublimation technique so all the uh, uh, condensed water the cubes will get evaporated and comes out so the product will be completely without water 
dried human plasma will be like powder. Now, the problem with plasma is plasma contains agglutinins or antibodies. When it is transfused, they may attack the red blood cells. So, to neutralize these things, all group plasmas are collected in a particular ratio. Like from blood group A and O, 9 parts are collected. From B and AB, 2-2 two, two parts are collected and entire thing is mixed and that is what is given to neutralize all these agglutinins. So, as I told you, uh, so dried human plasma, if it is stored below 20 degrees, protected from the light, it can be stored up to 5 years. A lot of advantages are there. It will be uh, reconstituted from water from water for injection and everything. So it can be used till 5 years. Okay. Now the next product, fresh frozen plasma. Understand the word. Fresh means the moment blood is collected within 6 to 8 hours or rather 6 hours, that plasma is freezed at minus 20 degrees, minus 20 degrees. So it, it becomes frozen. So that is why it has got the name fresh frozen plasma. So whenever it is required to be used, it is slowly uh, the temperature is increased at a water bath between 30 to 37 degrees of uh, centigrade. Now this product can be used till one year, shelf life is one year. But once it is thawed, once it is taken to the 37 degrees te temperature, it has to be used within a day. So again, there are certain differences like fresh frozen plasma and uh, a dried human plasma are very advantageous. They are used whenever there are, when there is a burn, people lose a lot of fluid plasma. To replace that, these things can be used. And especially fresh uh, frozen plasma has got all the clotting factors. So during uh, clotting problems also this can be used. Now the next important one is cryoprecipitate. Cryoprecipitate is prepared from fresh frozen plasma. Fresh frozen plasma is taken. The precipitate again it is centrifuged. The precipitate is separated. So only precipitate is separated and it is being concentrated. So what happens is the clotting factor amounts will be very high in cryoprecipitate. Clotting factors especially like uh, fibrinogen, factor 8, factor 13 and von Willebrand uh, factor. So when people have got problems related to these things like hemophilia A, A is because of reduced levels of uh, uh, clotting factor 8. Von Willebrand disease is because of reduced levels of von Willebrand factor. So treat all of them cryoprecipitate can be used. Again, this the cryoprecipitate and the other one, fresh frozen plasma, they can be used until one year, one year duration of time. And they, uh, they have to be stored near uh, uh, minus 20 degrees. Now, the next one is plasma uh, proteins. Now, leave the plasma proteins. Before that, you have one more component called as dried human serum. So blood is taken, it is collected without any anticoagulant. It, it, it is remained as such so that clotting occurs and again, the clotting factors are removed. Plasma minus clotting factor is what becomes serum. Now, this again undergoes lyophilization. That is why it has got the name dried human serum. See, dried human serum is sometimes is useful when there is fresh frozen plasma is not available. Immediately, dried human serum can be used to avoid shocks. Now, the last one is uh, plasma proteins. See, there is a particular way in which all the protein fragments of the plasma can be separated. This is called as plasma fractionation fractionation a particular uh, particular solvent is used at a particular temperature ph and ionic concentration based on this each and every protein can be isolated now the first one is fibrinogen so fibrinogen is isolated taken out now this is a, is again freeze dried dissolved in saline dissolved in citrate saline and then uh, it is packed by removing air and replacing with nitrogen so again, whenever it, it is required to use, it is reconstituted and used. You know, fibrinogen, when it is mixed with thrombin, it is converted to fibrin, which is used for clotting purposes. Now, the next product is again thrombin. Thrombin as such is not collected. Prothrombin can be isolated from the plasma. Again, it is collected, mixed with saline, citrate saline, and then uh, uh, it is uh, freeze dried and reconstituted whenever it is required. Again, see, prothrombin is mixed with thromboplastin and calcium so that it is converted to thrombin. So usually, again, this is also used along with fibrinogen to get clotting properties. Now, the next one is uh, fibrin foam. See, fibrinogen is taken, it is shaken rigorously so that it gives a froth to which thrombin is added. So it, it, it becomes a semi-solid kind of thing which is poured into trays, cut into required size pieces and it is sterilized with uh, hot air like uh, 
hot air uh, oven sterilization is carried out. So whenever it is required, it is taken, it is dipped in thrombin and it is placed to arrest the bleeding. Uh, usually it is left as such because it is completely made up of human origin. It just goes like that. It doesn't cause any problem. Now the last one is immunoglobulins. Again, from protein fractionation, the required antibodies are collected and used. So see directly this one is immunoglobulins or antibodies which is being used. This confers passive immunity. So directly you are giving antibodies. Now the last one, plasma substituents, there are three things are there like gum saline, which is sodium chloride and acacia. The next one is polyvinyl pyrrolidin. The problem with polyvinyl pyrrolidin is it is carcinogenic. The last one is dextran. This is this is made from a bacteria called leuconostac misantroidus. It converts sugar to dextron. Dextron is uh, a, a water molecule less of glucose. Now this dextron is a polymer. The higher number may cause allergen, allergic reactions. So the polymerization is controlled by using either acid hydrolysis, thermal degradation or using certain rays. So the required molecular weight one is used as a plasma substitute. So this is about blood products. Thank you.